tell us a little bit about how you were able to find those subvention funds? That's honestly one of the questions I hear the most uh, that people have, you know, when they are excited about open access publication, but yet don't see the clear path forward. So how were you able to do that? The, the very sizable subvention money that I got for, uh, for publishing open access was through the Tome initiative. You had to basically craft a marriage between University Press, who was part of this system, and, um, and your own host, you know, home university. Um, and if you could make that, make that marriage, you could then apply for the subvention funding. So I, I, I did, uh, you know, I had to go through a, a formal application process, but then um, was granted granted the money, and then we had to put together a, a kind of very specific uh, contract um, between the university and uh, and the publisher um, to uh, to to kind of finish uh, finish it all off. But it was not it was not onerous. So can you tell me just a little bit about why it was important? And we'll start with you, Kimberly. Why it was particularly important for you to see this book be published as open access? The goal of the of this book is to encourage and guide other academics to become expert witnesses. And in the current situation um, with asylum seekers, uh, we really desperately need more expert witnesses and expert witnesses are critical um, to the due process that asylum seekers um, deserve um, and need um, in a really treacherous system um, to find to find safety for themselves and their families and so it was important to me that my book be accessible um, uh, to academics but also to attorneys Thank you. And Christina? There were two main reasons why um, I thought it was uh, it was important to, to, to publish this open access. The first, increased accessibility for readers in Eastern Europe, Eurasia. And then the second, um, you know, perhaps a purely selfish reason, but, um, but my intuition that if the book was open access that it might um, get more curricular use. I'm traveling to Ukraine to, um, I've, been, I've been teaching a course there remotely to meet the students and we'll be giving a lecture um, uh, about some of the materials in the book and the, the school has put together a reading club of my book, you know, before the lectures, and all they had to do was like, share the link. So that's a, a kind of a nice anecdote that maybe blends both the kind of geographical argument and then also the curricular argument.